you might see your partner as like a grumpy, overworked man who leaves the toilet seat up, doesn't wash dishes, and doesn't fold clothes. But your sister or your best friend might see a hardworking, dedicated family man who puts a smile on everyone's face around him. You guys get what I'm saying? And you want to keep it spicy. You want to change it up. And for those of you that are going to be like, oh, I don't have any ideas. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know how. I'm going to break it down for you because in today's video, we're going to be talking about 10 ways that you can kind of reignite the spark and the passion in, I'm not going to say a dying relationship, but maybe a relationship that just kind of is lackluster. I feel like when you first get in a relationship, you're in that honeymoon stage, you're so in love with that person, you have those butterfly feelings in your stomach, and it's just overall really exciting. Then the longer than you're with that person, you kind of tend to fall into like an everyday routine and neglect that person in a way that you did not in the beginning. Tip number one, touch more. Whether it's holding hands or hugging every single time that you see a possible moment to squeeze a hug or a little touch in can really help to keep the intimacy alive in a relationship. My dad actually gave me a piece of advice that many, many years ago I put into play and I believe that it is so true and it's so powerful. He told me that whenever you're in a fight with your loved one to kind of just hold hands. I know it's it sounds so weird because you're like, you're mad, you're in the moment. The last thing that you want to do is hold that person's hand, but it really does bring you down to earth. Human touch is a very, very powerful thing. So you want to hug often, hold hands often, kiss often, overall touch more often, and that will really help to kind of keep the intimacy alive. Number two, leave each other little love notes. Now this is something that I absolutely love doing, and I kind of got Mike into doing it as well, and I will try to kind of slip in stories here and there. For example, advice that my dad gave me, things that I do in my own relationship. So um, yes, writing little love notes for each other. Whether it's something that you're slipping into a lunchbox, because if you're like me, you kind of want to take care of your man and make him lunches. You can leave it on the dashboard of his car, maybe next to his keys or whatever you know that he's grabbing on his way out before he leaves for the morning. I just feel that text messages and emails have really taken over all of our communication and it's just it doesn't really show any effort. There's something really special about pen on paper. I feel that it is so romantic. And once I started doing that, I noticed my partner did it back. And it's a wonderful way to just start your day. Even if it's just something really quick, missing you, thinking about you, can't wait for tonight. Two, three sentences is all that it takes. Also, if you guys are having one of those days, and I'm not gonna lie, this happens to us all the time, we are some hot-headed people, um, where you're kind of just clashing, maybe you're both grumpy, you're both just in a mood. If you take a moment to go and read those notes or cards or whatever communication that you guys had with each other on one of those good days, it just really, it gives you a nice feeling. Maybe you'll start to forget why you were so mad in the first place and it's just basically a mood changer. So definitely read those cards and notes and be sure to leave lots of them. Tip number three is be more unpredictable. In the beginning, when we start a relationship with someone, you're naturally more spontaneous and I feel like it's really important to keep that alive no matter how long you're with someone. So for example, me and Mike will say maybe on a Monday or Tuesday night or during the week at 1 or 2 a.m., wake up, hop in our car, take a trip down to the 7-Eleven, get a tub of ice cream, come home, watch a show, like something that we just normally wouldn't do during the week. If that doesn't really work for you because you have a demanding job schedule, you could always say on a Saturday or a Sunday have a little staycation where you guys will go to a hotel that's maybe five minutes away from your natural habitat where you're at every single day of the week and you just go to a hotel and have a little staycation. It's a different atmosphere, it's exciting, and it just gives you little things to look forward to. Bottom line is you want to keep life exciting. So just do random little things. They don't have to be extravagant and really out there. Just do little things to keep life interesting. That tip kind of goes hand in hand with tip number four, and that is schedule moments to look forward to. Now, don't get me wrong. I know that a lot of people work Monday through Friday, and it's really hard to be spontaneous during the crazy work week, and come Saturday and Sunday, you're normally so exhausted from your work week that all you want to do is lay in bed and watch TV, and I love Netflix and chill. Like, that's an amazing thing to me. Don't get it wrong. Netflix and chill is definitely one of life's little pleasures and I absolutely don't take it for granted, but it's not something that you want to do every single weekend. I think it's really important to make it a point to at least, I would say two times a month, schedule special dates that are different from your norm, whether it's Netflix and chill or dinner and a movie and those typical kind of routine dates that 
can get a little bit on the boring side. For example, you guys might want to go to a museum that you've never been to before or go explore a nearby city. Mike is really into hockey, so we will make an entire day of going to a hockey game. And even though that's something that I'm not really into, we have a little kind of deal where, you know, he'll be able to enjoy his hockey game as long as he gets me whatever food I want. So I'm happy, he's happy. Another thing is I'm really into tea and I always wanted to go to kind of like a little authentic tea house in the city. So that's something that we have planned coming up for next month. And yeah, you just want to have little things to look forward to out of the ordinary. Number five is to be sure to indulge in me time. Now me personally, I love going to get my hair did, my nails did, I like getting my eyebrows threaded, I like getting my eyelashes permed. Occasionally I like to indulge in yoga and massages and I feel like when you feel better about yourself inside and outside, you're overall a more pleasant person to be around and that is going to extend into your relationship. It will do amazing things for you, I guarantee it. I totally just sounded do you guys remember that commercial where the guy was like, you're gonna like the way you look. I guarantee it. I totally just reminded myself of him. Okay. Number six is purposely miss each other. Anything in too much in abundance, like too much of a good thing is never good. You need to allow yourself to have time away from each other to really miss one another. Absence absolutely makes the heart grow fonder. And I would honestly just recommend scheduling a weekend away from each other where you catch up with friends and family separately. I know that I am so used to spending every single weekend with Mike and we have our little routines. And when he's not there, it really does give me a chance to miss him and vice versa. I feel like it's so important so that one of you don't take the other one for granted. And you just wanna spend a little bit of time away. I'm not saying going on vacation, spending a month away from each other, but just a little bit of time away from each other and then when you're back together you can make up for lost time <laughs> number seven I would say to revisit the earlier days this is one that is really important for me and it's a lot easier for me because I do have a vlog channel where we basically documented like the week that we met moving in with each other going on vacation holidays like all of our important special moments our very first Valentine's Day together it's all documented and when I actually sit down and watch those videos all of the feelings kind of come back now I'm not recommending for everyone to go out and start a vlog channel because I understand that those are very personal moments that most of us are not going to want to share with the entire world, but I do think it's important to kind of sit down with your partner and just reminisce on those old days. Maybe how you guys first felt the like first time that you laid eyes on each other or the first time that you guys went on a date with one another. You want to bring back those butterflies in your stomach type of moments. I feel that it is so important to communicate, talk, 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 talk. It's going to do magical things for your relationship. Number eight is to make a ritual for every single evening. Whether it is cooking dinner together while listening to 70s music, um, sitting down watching a certain TV series every single night, maybe taking a five to 10 minute walk after dinner together every single night, or even just sitting down in bed before you guys go to sleep just discussing what was your highlight of the day. I feel that it's really important to just kind of wrap your day up together as a couple. Your partner is the person that you, the first person that you see every single morning when you wake up and the last person that you kiss and hold and hug goodnight before you end your evening every single night. And I feel that it's really important to just cherish those moments and make the most of them that you can. I always like to say don't take them for granted while you have them because whether you like it or not, these moments are not going to last forever. This person is not going to survive forever and neither are you. And I've said it many times on my vlog channel before, when you're sitting on your deathbed, whatever you're arguing about, is this moment really going to matter? I feel like it's very important to just pick and choose your battles. It's something that I am personally working on myself. At the end of the day, a lot of these petty things that we fight about are really not going to matter. And me and Mike like to really make it a point and we don't ever leave the house mad at each other. You never know what God forbid could happen. So we do not go to sleep mad at each other ever and we never leave the house mad at each other. So that's just kind of another little pointer that I'm throwing in there. Number nine is get others perspectives. I feel that sometimes we tend to look at our partners in a very negative lighting and we tend to see the cup as half empty instead of half full. And don't go out there and put your information like to whatever random friends that just want to gossip because we know those people are pretty much everywhere. Be selective with who you discuss this with, whether it's a best friend, maybe your sister or your mom. And a lot of times you might see your partner as like a grumpy, 
overworked man who leaves the toilet seat up, doesn't wash dishes, and doesn't fold clothes. But your sister or your best friend might see a hardworking, dedicated family man who puts a smile on everyone's face around him. You guys get what I'm saying? Sometimes it's important just to get somebody else's perspective. And last but not least, number 10 is probably the most obvious out there. I wasn't gonna mention this, but you know what guys? It's important and I could make a video dedicated all about this topic, but again, I'm not really sure if we're going to go there. Sex. Sex is a very important part of a relationship and you want to keep it spicy. You want to change it up. And for those of you that are going to be like, oh, I don't have any ideas. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know how. I'm going to break it down for you really quick. Timing, toys, lingerie, movies, foreplay, fantasies, role playing, flirtation, positions, location, and key point here, communication. All of that kind of jumbled up together will make you have an amazing sex life. And yes, it is so, so important. If you feel that your relationship is kind of lackluster at the moment, I feel that it's something that is very normal. It's something that you have to work at. You're not gonna have those, I'm not gonna say you don't have those butterfly feelings once you're with somebody for a long time because I do personally feel that you can still have those feelings and get excited when they come home from work and to get dressed up and go out on dates, but it's just something that you have to work at a little bit more the longer that you're with somebody. So definitely do not lose hope. It does not mean that you're not meant to be together. Don't listen to all the negativity. It's worth giving a shot, but it has to be on both sides. Thank you guys all so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Mwah.